What is going on, YouTube? Northeast Ohio here. Back for our Sunday chat. Our week interview, weekly market update, whatever you want to call it. Um, going to do something slightly different this week. Have more specific cards to talk about rather than kind of like a broad strokes type thing. We just did the basketball video kind of talking about uh, doing a little bit more of a deep dive into the current NBA market. So I pulled out some specific cards to look at, pulled out a specific, some specific football cards to look at. Um, don't really have much in the way of baseball. Acuna's going up. Tatis Jr. slightly going up. Lou Bob's flattened out. Uh, and the rest of the market's pretty much slightly trending down or flat. There's your baseball update. Done and done. So um, before we get into that, a couple housekeeping things. One, like, comment, sub, all the YouTube nonsense down below. And I have the desk camera on for a minute because I have a quick thing I need to do. So uh, I recently found out a few weeks ago that uh, one of my best friends from high school, her son, her seven-year-old son, watches the show on occasion. And Easton, shout out to you, Easton, is a big Colin Sexton fan. Big Colin Sexton fan. Apparently, Easton doesn't fully understand NBA defense yet, but that's fine. He'll learn. He's seven. So I have a little bit of a reverse mail day today. Uh, I went through, and this is nothing crazy, uh, but I went through some of my boxes uh, earlier today when I had some time, and I pulled out... A couple Sexton cards, nothing crazy, but there are some pretty cool looking cards here. So um, two from Optic and one from Mosaic. We got a little blue velocity with the little laser lines on it there. We got a purple hollow. Come on, autofocus. Got a purple hollow. There we go. And uh, pink camo out of Mosaic. So Easton, buddy, these are heading your way. Um, I'll drop those off in the mail this week. So you should get those in the mail this week, buddy. And then if I have, uh, come across any other sex and stuff, uh, I will send it your way. I got my eyes peeled. So shout out to you, Easton. Okay. So that was our little reverse mail day thing. Easton's got some sex and stuff coming his way. I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for some more stuff for him. Let's uh, get rid of the desktop camera and switch over to market movers here and talk about some cards. So we are just under one week removed or basically one week removed from uh, the Heat winning the NBA title. As we talked about in a video very early last week. Uh, Lakers prices were kind of tanking, which a lot of people were surprised by. A lot of people weren't. This is the normal thing, but some people, this is their first time through this. So I just kind of wanted to go over why that was happening, but I wanted to pull up and look to see if that was still holding true. And as of right now, it appears that it is, uh, Anthony Davis on the week, the last seven days is down a whopping 25% on his PSA 10 prism. Um, I will tell you what, there's going to be a point where this bottoms out, that this is going to be a steal if you have any faith that the NBA market comes back big time. Uh, this is definitely a higher end card, uh, but it is currently down to 1350. We can see if I blow back to the 90 day chart, this card had gotten up to the mid 3000s. Um, to low 3000s and it sold at around 3000 for a very long period of time, uh, almost a full month. So we are almost, and in fact, actually we are lower than what it was 90 days ago. Uh, this is one of the harder falls. Uh, most of the guys that fell post their playoff run did not drop back to, well, let's go back to July 1st. If he got that low, I say most of them did not drop down to July 1st pricing. And actually he has gone, he is right at his July 1st price. This is one of the biggest, hardest drops I have seen out of all the NBA stars. Uh, once they left or once they were finished playing their season, whenever that was, whether that was in the bubble or in the playoffs or in the finals, conference finals, whatever, this is one of the hardest falls. And I'm kind of shocked by it. Um, 
they have a really good chance to go back to back. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're going to have a lot of competition, but AD's not going anywhere. He's like 26, 27 years old. Um, he's going to learn some stuff from LeBron. This just seems like a no brainer buy. If you're into higher end stuff, um, it may have hit the bottom already. If I had, you know, the 13, $1,400 laying around to sit on uh, something of this value, I would be very closely monitoring the AD market uh, and be looking to jump in sometime soon. Um, as long as the NBA market comes back to any sort of, sort of relevancy, this card's going to go right back up again. Uh, he's going to put up some huge numbers with the Lakers, and they're going to be defending a title. There's going to be a lot of hype around them. Just seems like a no-brainer. Speaking of high-end, let's look at LeBron's key rookies. So I pulled up his uh, Topps white suit, PSA 10 and PSA 9, and his Topps chrome, PSA 10, PSA 9. All four of them are down. Um, the PSA 9 is down the least percentage, which is a little weird, but everything else is down 15 to 25%. Uh, and once again, this is over the last seven days. So once again, the market got flooded with this stuff. And, and yes, I know that you see the pop the counts here for the sales over the last seven days are seem pretty low. But a lot of LeBron stuff, especially this stuff, does not sell very often. And once again, people that got in early on this, like earlier in the season, they're looking to get out now. So everyone's undercutting each other uh, because they don't want to hold on to it throughout the NBA offseason. Uh, that's pretty much why this is happening. Um, you know, if you put a few thousand bucks into LeBron and you don't want to hold that money over an uncertain winner, this is your time to get out um, while there, why there are buyers available. So uh, people begin to undercut each other to try to move the cards. So they're not stuck sitting on them uh, if they're not in him for the long haul. Once again, if you had a crap ton of money you wanted to tie up, this is probably going to be your time. Um, I don't see LeBron cards getting absolutely eviscerated for much longer. Um, you know, Regardless what you think about him, he is in the conversation with Jordan as number one or number two. Um, for me personally, he's number one, but I'm also from Northeast Ohio, and I watched the guy uh, raise a banner to the rafters in Gundarina slash the queue. So... Um, he will always be number one for me because he ended the Cleveland curse. But uh, moving through basketball. So let's talk about things trending the other direction. And one of the main things, and uh, one of my commenters mentioned this too, and I, and I agree with him. Um, I use, I have five players. We're not going to go through all five of them, but I have five players that I kind of use as a baseline for the health of the modern NBA market. And that's Luca, Trey, um, Ja, Zion, and Tatum. To me, those five are like the next generation um, of players. I, I don't count Giannis in that. I, I count him more in with the LeBrons and the Donovan Mitchells and the Damian Lillards and stuff like that um, as the older generation. Uh, and I know Mitchell and Tatum are in the same class, but I think Tatum has a higher upside. Maybe Mitchell should move into that group too. I don't know. But those are my five guys that I kind of use to determine the state of the market health. When I see those five guys trending up, that tells me that for the most part, the NBA market is headed in the right direction. And as we discussed in the video on Friday, that seems to be the case. So I wanted to look at Lucas stuff really quick. Uh, I pulled his base prism. I went PSA 10, PSA 9, BGS 9, 5, and raw. And we can see, though the gains aren't much, uh, up 3% on his PSA 10, up 8% on his 9. His BGS 9, 5 actually gone down slightly, and his raw is up 18%. BGS 9.5s typically lag behind even more so than PSA 9s, so this isn't that surprising. Um, but if you're looking to get good deals on just about anybody, BGS 9.5s are a great buying opportunity. I'm probably going to do a video on BGS 9.5s in general, kind of like how we talked about the PSA 9s as being kind of underrated uh, fairly recently. I think we might dive in and do the same on BGS 9.5s. Now, don't get me wrong. I, you could not pay me money to sub cards to Beckett right now. Um, they are the biggest disaster of the three major grading companies, uh, but I will buy their slabs all day long. Uh, I have no problem buying cards in their cases. 
not at all, but I would not sub to them at the moment, given their prices and their turnaround times. Uh, but once again, I kind of use Luca as one of the main market indicators. And over the last seven days, his raw being up 20% and his major PSA cards being up a few percentage points to me is a healthy sign. So uh, let's hop into football. Since we spent a ton of time on NBA on Friday, I wanted to dive a little bit in the football. The biggest faller in the market continues to be Lamar Jackson. Um, he His cards have just free falled since August. Um, he is down another almost 20% this week, down to 1400 now. If I blow this graph back, it's astounding how much money has come out of him. Um, in early August, August 9th, his PSA 10 prism was almost $4,000, $3,800 or 3759 It is now currently 1300 So let's just for the hell of it. Uh, let's see, that was on 8-9. I'm going to run this graph from 8-9 to today so we can see the fall from peak. It is down 62% from August 9th. Now, he has not looked great. Um, I mean, they're, they've won, but he has not necessarily lived up to last year's expectations. Uh, but this card was trending down prior to that. You can see here, the back half of the month of August, it was already coming down. And this was when the general sports card market as a whole went into a decline. So I'm not surprised by that. Uh, and then it kind of flattened off the first couple weeks of the season. And then he has not lived up to the hype the last few weeks. And now it's taken a second dive. Uh, you can see here it leveled off for almost the entire month of September. Then we get to the end of September and it's just starting to tank again. Um, so we'll see where the bottom is on this. If you believe in him, there's probably going to be a time to buy here fairly quickly. As you guys are well aware, I am not big on throwing a ton of money into the NFL market. Um, that being said, we're actually going to talk about a couple of guys here uh, that I believe could be good buys, uh, one for the long term and one maybe for a possible quick flip. But yeah, Lamar is as a Browns fan. I'll tell you what, I just hate to see it. I just hate to see it. Next up. Uh, two of the fastest risers in the market right now, and two of the only few actually going up. As we talk about week to week, the NFL market is a weird beast. Uh, most of the stuff goes down. We have a few things uh, that go up, um, and a couple of them this week are number one, or number two, actually, is DK Metcalf. Uh, he has just looked absolutely insane the last couple weeks. Uh, he had a great game last week, and his base prism, I'm sorry, not base prism, Silver Prism um, is up 45%. It started the week off last Saturday at 155 uh, and is now at up to 225. And it actually peaked a little higher than that at 270. Um, and if he plays well this week, I, I could easily see it going back up again. Um, but all his stuff is pretty much trending in the right direction. And the number one hottest player in the market by far, the most cards sold, uh, and the biggest price increase, and now the most expensive quarterback out of the 2020 class, at least going off Mosaic, which is the only key current product on the market. Yes, I know there's tons of other junk out there. Don Russ, Absolute This, all that stuff. Mosaic is one of the first real products uh, that has hit the market, uh, followed by Prism, which is coming up very soon, and then Optic and Select. I forget the order on those two. Those are the big four. Everything else, honestly, is not that big of a deal besides like your national treasures and your super high end product. But if you guys are buying football cards, stick to Mosaic, Prism, Optic, Select. And I would really honestly stick mostly to Prism um, if you're really wanting to get in on the key cards. And that will release in retail in about two and a half weeks. Good luck. Uh, may the odds ever be in your favor. Because that is going to be a wild ride. So the player that we are referencing, of course, is Justin Herbert. Uh, I have pulled up his mosaic silver here. It started the week out at 220. It is up to 316 for a 43% increase. All his stuff is up across the board. Uh, all his stuff is going crazy. It is the most sold card by a mile, as I said before. 
Uh, Herbert's stuff was just on fire. He got named the permanent starter. He looked really good in his game last week. Um, and he looks he looks legit. Uh, and that team's playing really well around him. They can't seem to win because they're the Chargers, and that's just kind of what they do. But um, he looks like the real deal. And his Prism Silver, man, you rip that thing open if you get Prism, look out. Uh, which reminds me, before we get into the last two cards, um, NBA Mosaic is getting a small restock at Walmart this week. Uh, it hit Meyer last week. If you have Myers around, I know not everyone in the country has Myers, uh, but if you have Myers around, NBA Mosaic Mega Boxes specifically hit Myers this week. The word on the street is they're hitting Walmart this week. Um, once again, may the odds ever be in your favor, but those retail for 55 bucks and they resale for probably about triple. Um, and if you can get them for retail, if you can get them for retail, it's 100% worth ripping them. If you can get them for retail, pay 55 and you rip them, you're probably going to be relatively okay unless you completely dud out. Um, obviously, the safe play is always to sell the sealed wax. Prices on mega boxes will probably come down a little bit this week as this new influx of inventory hits. So if you buy them uh, and you are looking to flip them, I would honestly sit on them for about six weeks. Uh, this exact same situation played itself out with Optic. Uh, Optic Mega's released at Walmart's way into the product life cycle. Uh, they kind of came out of nowhere. Everyone was kind of caught off guard. Um, but I forget what the exact prices were, but Optic Mega Boxes were basically selling for like around 150 ish. They dropped down to almost 80 when this Walmart restock happened. I don't know what Mosaic Megas are going for now. I think it's around the same, but I would expect the same thing to happen. There's going to be a bunch of inventory that hits uh, eBay, probably starting now because Myers have restocked already. You're going to see those prices come down to around. I bet you they come back down to about 80 or 90 bucks, a little double retail because the people that are truly flipping that just want to move it as quickly as possible to get their money back are going to sell it immediately and they're all going to undercut each other. So the best tip that I could give you, if you buy Mosaic Megas this week and you are not opening them, lock them in a closet, give them to your wife, tell her to hide them from you, whatever, do whatever you need to do, bury them in the backyard. And then come back to them in about six to eight weeks and the prices will be back up to that 140, 150 mark or whatever they're going for currently. Um, that's the best thing I can tell you. If you don't need the money to immediately pay off a credit card, sit on them and hold them because everyone else that's flipping needs the money to pay off the credit card and they're just looking for the quick buck. Uh, if you can hold out for a little bit of long term, you will make way, way more money doing that. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind if you run into any, op I'm sorry, mosaic mega boxes this week at uh, Walmart. So go check your Walmarts. Uh, and once again, good luck. Uh, so let's talk about two players uh, that I think could be good buying opportunities. One's a long term play. One's a shorter term play. The long term play is Dak. Uh, Dak's prices. This is his 2016 prism. This is a silver or a prism. That's the only way that they came back then. Uh, this is the PSA 10. You can see it's currently going for just under 500 bucks. Uh, it is all the way back to essentially the price that it was back in mid July. Um, on July 19th, it was selling for 434. On October 17th, it's selling for 470. Uh, so you can see the chart here. It peaked at around 1400, 1300, between 13 and 1400. It regularly sold for 1200 plus for over a month straight. Um, I haven't heard definitively yet, but I assume Dak is going to be ready to go for the start of next season. If, if you have the money to park, this to me is an amazing buy. Uh, at sub 500 or whatever it ends, I think it's basically leveled out. It might go a little bit lower, but I, I think we're basically there. We can see it got down to 399. It spiked up, then it spiked back down again. When you usually start seeing stuff like this is when you start to find out that it looks like it may have leveled off because it dropped back down again, then slowly spiked back up. But I would say if you could find anything 450 or less, um, I would be a buyer. Uh, you're going to have to sit on it for almost a year. But what's going to happen is 
I mean, look at what this was selling for. Just say it stays flat, which is basically what it was doing before. Um, you know, prior to the season starting, it had this run up. So this is the month leading up to the season. The season starts first of September. It was going for 900 bucks the first of September. And it was basically selling for what it's selling for now back in July. So I think worst case scenario, you could buy it for sub 500 now and probably sell it for close to double in the lead up to next season. As long as he doesn't have any major setbacks in training camp, do a little bit more digging on his injury. Um, but I think Dak is a really good long-term hold. Uh, if you're okay, you know, spending four to 500 bucks on a card and sitting on it for almost a year. But I think it's pretty safe. Once again, unless the entire sports card market goes kaboom, which it's 2020 guys, who knows what could happen. Um, but yeah, if you got the money sitting around, to me, this looks like an easy double up because um, he's not going to be doing anything as long as he doesn't have any setbacks and everything looks good. Once again, do some deep dive on the injury and make sure everything sounds like he's going to be good. But if he's practicing, you know, come late summer, he's there for training camp or whatever. He didn't hurt his arm, you know. It's It's not a knee injury. It's an ankle. Yeah, it was nasty looking, but. I don't think he'll have any long-term effects from this in, in regards to playing quarterback. So I think he's a really good buy low long-term hold play. But once again, you got to sit on him for almost a year before you get that money back uh, about nine months, probably at least uh, last one. I think has a really good quick flip. And this is from my hometown Browns. Uh, and that's Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb based prism. I was shocked by this as all the way down the five to six bucks. And these were all auctions that ended. Uh, we have a $6, a $5, and an $8. Uh, this card peaked up around almost 30 or 20 to 30 bucks. Or I'm sorry, 20 to 25 bucks. I'd be looking to buy these and sell them when he comes back. I would, once again, I do not like long term holding running backs, as we've seen with Nick Chubb specifically. They're very injury prone, but I think you could buy now at the bottom wait for him to come back one game, throw a couple touchdowns on the board, and then immediately sell him for probably two to three X, depending on what his prices do, uh, but probably easily two X. Um, so I am really looking at Nick Chubb stuff uh, as an absolute floor buy low type play uh, stock up, sit on him for a few weeks. He's supposed to be out about six weeks total. I believe that injury was he's already missed two weeks. Uh, or I'm sorry. Yeah. Two weeks. This will be the second week that he misses against the Steelers. Um, and then hold on to that and flip it uh, in a few weeks. Uh, you're not, this is an extremely low risk play too. If you can get them for under 10 bucks a card, that's a very low risk play. Uh, you buy 10 of these things uh, at less than 10 bucks a piece. And then maybe you could turn that, you know, 70 to a hundred dollars into 175 to $200 uh, fairly easily. So, uh, once again, I know everyone doesn't have the budgets for the Dax and the the Lucas and all that stuff, but here's something at the bottom that you can make a smart play on uh, and easily uh, jump the market back up on that uh, once he comes back and make a nice little profit on a very low risk card. And if he gets hurt, if he gets, you know, re-injures it in a rehab, you were into him for $5 a card. Uh, and he's not a bad long-term hold anyway. So uh, when it comes to running backs, especially at that price point, but. Uh, that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. So Browns versus Steelers today, probably the biggest game in the Browns uh, for as long as I can remember. Uh, so we will see what happens with that big day here at the, the Neo campus. But uh, we will catch you guys on the next one. YouTube stuff down below, like, comment, sub, all that jazz. Uh, and to my number one seven-year-old fan, Easton, got you some Colin Sexton coming your way. Uh, so we'll catch you guys on the next one and peace.